Hey everyone, and welcome to What Did I Miss? Cobra Kai has become one of the most popular series over the past five years, beginning as a fun homage to the Karate Kid franchise. But now as the show has just completed its fifth season, it stands really as its own creation by not only satisfying admirers of the old movies, but also bringing in a new generation of characters and fans. Even though a sixth season has not officially been greenlit at the time of writing this video, with the overwhelming response of the last season being positive, it is a good bet that Cobra Kai will get another turn on the mat. Especially since the creators of the series have often said that the original plan was for the series to last at least six seasons. As a fan of the series myself, I can hardly wait for the next season, so I thought I would do my best to take a look at what I think we can expect to see in a sixth and perhaps final season of Cobra Kai. I would also love to know what you think, so let us know in the comments what you would like to see and if you like my ideas. Spoilers for the five seasons of Cobra Kai, the first three Karate Kid movies as well. Also, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up by hitting the like button and subscribe for future ones. First, let's talk about where all the characters are left at the end of Season 5. Terry Silver, who became the biggest bad of the entire series, was soundly defeated not only on the mat, but also in the eyes of the law, as Stingray renounced his prior statement and put the blame of his assault on the right person. It was also revealed that Terry Silver had been cheating in matches by paying off referees, which makes him a criminal in the court of public opinion as well, ruining any reputation that he had built. At one point, he was smart enough to take on Kim Dae-un as a business partner, so with him seemingly out of the picture, the head of the snake would fall to her. I am not sure that we have seen the last of Terry Silver though, but odds are that his legal troubles will be the first thing he deals with when the season begins. As far as Kim Dae-un's involvement next season, I do see her returning as well, but I would not be surprised if it was not as the leader of Cobra Kai. She only joined with Terry Silver to spread her family's karate around the world and was not at all interested in the rivalry he had created with Daniel LaRusso. So I would not be surprised if she actually sold her shares of Cobra Kai, especially given the legal troubles of the last two owners of the dojo, and went back home to create her own dojo. I believe that the finale of the season will see the members of all the dojos compete in the Sekai Taikai tournament, and when they do, I think that Kim Dae-un will be there waiting with her own new dojo. Her dojo would be a dangerous enemy due not only to her ruthless training methods, but also because she has worked with many of the students who will be competing at the tournament. Then the question becomes, who now owns Cobra Kai? Well, thanks to faking his own death for a third time, John Kreese is now out in the world as an escaped convict. The irony being that after Stingray confessed that it was Terry Silver that attacked him, Mr. Kreese would have probably been let out of jail as a free man. But even with these charges dropped, the state of California will not look kindly on a man who assaulted members of their prison staff and then strolled out the door. So I don't see him being back at Cobra Kai anytime soon. This doesn't mean that we have seen the last of John Kreese, it just means that he will have to lay and wait before he strikes again. But I like that. I like that. With Kreese and Silver out of the picture at least as owners, that does leave two other potential buyers, Daniel LaRusso and Mike Barnes. Daniel would be the most obvious person to take over the dojo since he does seem to be successful enough to make a large purchase like this. This would really bring his relationship and history with Cobra Kai full circle, since as the new owner he would not only be accepting what the dojo represents, but also now he would be able to take the dojo where he thinks that it should be. Daniel has come a long way in his understanding of the principles of Cobra Kai, mostly through his relationship with Johnny. Though even his own daughter Samantha has shown that she wanted to learn the way of the fist along with the teachings of Miyagi-Do. But honestly, a member of Miyagi-Do purchasing Cobra Kai may look like defeat to a lot of fans of the franchise, and of course, for Cobra Kai... Defeat does not exist in this dojo, does it? No, it? So the next most likely buyer of Cobra Kai would be Mike Barnes, and honestly, I think this lends to the most interesting storyline. Mike Barnes re-entered the story in the fifth season, and while he was only in a few episodes, each of his experiences showed that he had great chemistry with the cast of the show, especially with Johnny Lawrence. Yes. I like the way this guy thinks. Johnny! Oh, uh, the bad boy's right, man. Silver's been school with us for too long. At the end of the season, he was seen leaving Terry Silver's house with a very expensive painting, and by expensive, I mean it's worth a hundred million dollars. So after he revitalizes the furniture business that Terry Silver destroyed, Mr. Barnes should have a few dollars left over to purchase a new dojo. Let's also not forget that way back in Karate Kid 3, during Mike Barnes' first appearance, he would not fight unless he was promised a 50% share in Cobra Kai, showing that even then he aspired to own it. For me to do my absolute best, which is what I want to do for you, I'm afraid I'm going to need 50%. Ooh. I think it makes a lot of sense to bring Mike Barnes back for the sixth season and make him the new owner of Cobra Kai. Since he is also rebuilding his furniture business, he will need someone to help him run the dojo, which leaves the door open for Johnny Lawrence to return to his home as a partner and sensei at Cobra Kai. 
One of the most enjoyable introductions was seeing Johnny Lawrence and Mike Barnes finally meet and even trade jabs physically and verbally. It would be so entertaining to watch these two become friends and business partners always trying to out bad boy the other. I think this relationship could also lend itself to a funny subplot of Daniel being jealous of the newfound friendship between the two after hating both of them with a passion for most of his life. During the fifth season, Johnny had no interest in being a sensei as he was trying to find a stable source of income by becoming a gigolo, as Dimitri put it. Mr. Lawrence is now expecting a child, so building an income will still be a concern, but if nothing else, this series has showed the audience that Johnny Lawrence is at his best in a Cobra Kai gi as a sensei. Now with Mike Barnes back in the dojo monetarily, he will be able to pay Johnny as his partner, which will give Johnny the stability that he needs. This will allow Johnny to concentrate on his students as well as his new family and his new wife. Eagle Eye viewers pointed out a scene last season in which it looks like Carmen is showing Amanda a ring, and we know from interviews with the actors that several scenes were filmed for season 5 that did not make it for whatever reason and could be used for season 6. It looks like we will be seeing Johnny pop the question to Carmen and she will of course say yes, putting them on track to get married this season as well. Or it is possible that there will be a slight time jump and by the time we meet them again, Johnny and Carmen will be married and already with a child. Putting Johnny back on top of Cobra Kai makes the most sense and will give him a chance to get his students prepared for the Sekai Taikai tournament in the right way. This will also allow Daniel LaRusso to enter his students in the same tournament and use the Miyagi-Do name after there was some contention about what the dojo name would be when they were accepted. As far as which students will be where, I think that now with Johnny and Mike Barnes in charge of Cobra Kai, they will not only teach the way of the fist but also about redemption. Both are former villains who are trying to make amends while staying a badass, and a lot of these kids that have been training under Cobra Kai can relate to that. Kenny emerged as a promising student and even won his match against Hawk, but did so using some questionable tactics. He obviously has a bright future as a competitor, but will need to unlearn a lot of the bully tactics that he has learned in the past year. Recreating Cobra Kai as a place where you can build yourself back up will not only speak to Kenny, but also Tori, who after learning that her win over Samantha was a lie, started to doubt her own place in the dojo. The fifth season continued to cloud her path, as not only the senseis at Cobra Kai, but also John Kreese were manipulating her to do things that she did not understand. But her relationship with Robbie also began to grow, and I think that she and Robbie will find a home at the new Cobra Kai. Robbie had a huge redemption arc in the fifth season, and is now totally in the corner of not only Tori but Johnny, his father. I think that in the sixth season, Robbie will try and spend more time with his new family and less as a karate bully, and we will see him open up more to both his father and Tori. Another big development in the fifth season is that the rivalry between Robbie and Miguel seems to be over for good and they are no longer fighting one another. And speaking of relationships, Miguel and Sam finally told the other how they feel and are back together. I think that one of the more interesting plot lines of his sixth season could be Miguel choosing to train at Cobra Kai or Miyagi-Do. Since he now has good reasons to train with either dojo, even though he still identified as Eagle Fang Karate under Johnny when they trained together. His relationship with Sam may also persuade him to join Miyagi-Do to spend more time with her and her father. This will give Miyagi-Do another good fighter for the upcoming tournament, which they will not have many of if Robbie goes back to Cobra Kai. We will have to wait and see who Miguel chooses, and this decision could have a lot of effect on the characters and the story this season. Then there is Daniel-san, who after growing up fighting bullies has now befriended all of his known enemies. With Cobra Kai seemingly on his side now, it may be a bit harder to find someone for Daniel to be upset with. It could be that Miguel's choice between Miyagi-Do and Cobra Kai rekindles some of the bad blood between himself and Johnny, especially if Johnny is working with Mike Barnes and Daniel no longer has Chosen at his side. Chosen became one of my favorites during the fifth season as he seems to be one of those characters that can pull off being intense as well as really goofy and still make it work. I really do not want to see him leave the story, but the fifth season definitely made it seem like he has some unfinished business back in Okinawa with Kumiko. I wouldn't be surprised if the season started out with Chosen working with Daniel, much like Barnes would be now working with Johnny, only to see Chosen leave early in the season to start a serious relationship with Kumiko. Daniel might start to feel lonely without a partner and begin to make questionable decisions to make himself feel better. Even though Johnny has the bad boy reputation, it seems like Daniel's temper gets him in more trouble than anyone else and that could come into play again in the sixth season. As far as the overarching plot of the season goes, I think that it will show both Cobra Kai and Miyagi-Do getting their students ready for the big stage and the Sekai Teikai tournament. It's possible that this is where John Kreese might return as well, since you know that he is going to show up at the worst possible point. It would be pretty badass to see if once both dojos arrive at the tournament, which will probably be held at a country that does not have an extradition treaty with the United States, they will find John Kreese training there with Kim Dae-un and her new students. She will want to make sure that she wins the tournament and bringing back Kreese will be a way to intimidate and confuse both dojos. This will bring all the ongoing storylines together on a bigger stage than we have ever seen at the All Valley Tournament and make for an exciting finale.
Well, that is just what I think will happen, but let me know in the comments what you think. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please hit that like button if you have enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time on What Did I Miss?